Hi, we're Chicks Talking Shift, and we've just had the best conversation. You're really going to enjoy it. We talk about change and transformation, and especially how to make course corrections that help us integrate all the change that we're going through. Is integrating what's working and what, uh, what hasn't worked into what we want this next, uh, next normal to look like. And so integration was huge part of this conversation. There, it's like takeout food. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Take out food for the spirit and the soul. These are little bite-sized snacks. Could be a freaking uh, feast for some, but maybe just a little bite-sized snack for some people who take one or two things away. This is for you. <laughs> My favorite is the dessert. So if you hang out to the end of the video, you'll see some fun bloopers and outtakes that you'll really enjoy. <laughs> the dessert. That's awesome. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Enjoy. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Chicks Talking Shift. I'm Angel. And I'm Alicia. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Angel. Hello. Looking good. Yes, you look <laughs> well. Yeah, what are we talking about today? Well, here's the deal. We are going through this massive shift, and it caught us a little bit of, by surprise, little unexpected changes in our lives, a little disruption. And it kind of feels like uh, the world didn't let us know that it was decided to go on a course correction. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, wait a minute, you're, <laughs> oh, oh, we are changing. Oh, okay. I, I just, uh, I heard about this. <laughs> but I, I, I do see that you were serious now, you know, we're, we're on this massive course correction. And we are all feeling like we are up Schiff's Creek without a paddle, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so <laughs> once you and I, we were having this conversation about a course correction, correcting the course of our lives, uh, because we've gotten off uh, before COVID. I mean, if we're gonna compare then versus now, there are a lot of things I think a lot of people are realizing, including myself, I could speak for myself, uh, and that is what wasn't working. Uh, what was not working. <laughs> and so now uh, we're finding that uh, it's a time of integration. It's a, it's a time to integrate parts of what we liked about our life before the pandemic which has been a huge catalyst for our transformation um, and take those, but also releasing some other parts and integrating all kinds of things. And so, and I wanna ask you about integration because we are all, and I feel pretty confident speaking for all of humanity right now. <laughs> oh, you've got some big, <laughs> I'm <laughs> going through an integration process. Does it not feel like that? I, I, I want to challenge and welcome and invite anybody who's listening to say they're not going through anything. Yeah. Because it's, it's integration time. And you talk about integration a lot and blending. Uh, you, you just seem to have, uh, have a way of helping us tap into that, uh, our higher selves and then go, oh yeah, 
forgot about that person. <laughs> I forgot about that. And then, and then integrating our lives to align with that. Yeah. So. Integration is almost like, um, I mean, a piece of it would be responding, right? It's figuring out what's going on and then making the choices as to how we're going to move forward with, with whatever that is, with, you know, how we're going to, um, how we're going to talk about it, how we're going to feel about it, how we're going to think about it, how we're going to respond to it. And so if we're not integrating things right now, then that makes me wonder if we're not stuck or if we're not resistant, maybe we've got our heels dug in because we don't like what our experience is. I get we don't like what our experience is. There's a whole lot of things about what's going on that doesn't feel good to me. There's freedom that I don't have that I used to. And there's just a whole, there's a whole lot about it. But I'm not going to dig my heels in against it because it's so huge on a collective scale. And it's, it's global, it's giant. So me sticking my little heels in the, in the, in the sand and, and refusing or resisting to go forward and figure out how I'm going to respond or how I'm going to create my pathway with whatever cards that are dealt with, dealt to me, because I got the cards I got dealt to me. You know, now I get a few extra that might be wild cards that I get to play with. But for the most part, what happens happens, and then I get to make my choices accordingly. It's the same as boundaries. It's the same as boundaries. You can set your boundaries. The other person ha gets to decide whether they're going to honor them or not. And then you get to decide what's going to happen if those boundaries aren't respected. So we get to make it choice by choice by choice. <laughs> Am I boring you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know when you get that high energy it makes you yawn yeah yeah i'm getting some really high energy vibes right now <laughs> and i have to yawn <laughs> i'm trying not to yawn so. <laughs> talking about it it's talking about it's making me want to yawn oh my god oh. <laughs> you know yawns are why are yawns catching <laughs> Oh, stop that. Oh, my God. I got it. I got it. All right. I needed to do that. That's so funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you see that fascinating show where we got to see those chicks yawn? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> We're integrating these higher energies. <laughs> and I'm gonna quit yawning. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, right in the middle of her own show, she was yawning. <laughs> it's like she was <laughs> bored to tears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was the faces. Oh, it was the faces you kept trying to. <laughs> oh, I have to play it back. Oh, Did she hilarious. know she's on camera? <laughs> chai this is my perfect energy uh vanilla chai the yogi yeah. tea uh-huh um, the best the best really? uh, hmm. yeah and then i put a little bit of the 
Trader Joe's um, chai mix in there. Half, half uh, of it's, it's a perfect chai latte right now. Um, but what I love about these teas are the little sayings on the back. The little sayings, yes. What's that one say? This one says, <clears throat> the little strings in the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my eyes. <laughs> Got everything to do with that giant string. <laughs> <It's flying laughs> <over the desk>. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the voice of your soul is breath. No, it is not, Angel. Oh, that's weird as hell. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. I love it. <laughs> wow, see, spirit speaks to you, speaks to all of us in, ways, in ways we just don't expect it. <laughs> You gotta be aware, gotta have that awareness. So you get it. And they're little God winks. Total God <laughs> <laughs> Back at you, God. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. <laughs> Showing up. <laughs> That's amazing. That was in our prayer. Bless. The voice of your soul is breath. Ooh, that's wild. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll take that little guy. is what the soul gets to experience as a human. Our breath is here to remind us. of our soul. <laughs> I thought you were doing really good. I was loving it. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to it, but then it just sounded like. No, oh, there is because, <laughs> shut your eyes again. We're going because I'm going to say something. Well, I was going to say something. I was going to say that the breath is what keeps the soul in the body, but I don't believe that the soul is in the body. I believe the body's in the soul. Yes. yes. So maybe it's this breath brings the spirit. Yes. Yes. It, it brings the, it's the spirit in the body. It keeps the spirit in the body because without the breath, the spirit leaves. That's right. The breath is powerful. Mm. Oh, we have to remember to breathe through these times. Very important. Yeah. I'll take that little God wink for sure. <clears throat> I always say that when I get my chai from Starbucks. What? I'm like, well, they're like, enjoy your, your chai. I'm like, you mean heaven in a cup? <laughs> <laughs> heaven in a cup. That's cute. That's cute. No, um, you've always got your chai. Yeah. I yeah. love chai. Yeah. 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 So, anywho, anywho, we were talking about something relatively important, I think. <laughs> <laughs> integration, integration, integration. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I really think some of what we're having to integrate right now is, is, is some stuff to pay attention to mm -hmm. is our egos. Is our egos, are our egos. Go, I speak for a living. <laughs> 
anywho, <clears throat> why do I keep saying anywho? I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard you say that before. I'm like, okay, that's the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Strange little filler word. It is. <laughs> Just canceled it right now. Okay, ego. Start paying attention to ego, integrating ego with spirit. Uh, our ego can serve our spirit if it's managed. So yeah. that integrating that, okay? Whereas we have probably been more ego driven, worried about what society, you know, thinks and status and all those things. And uh, if anything, the pandemic has snapped us out of that a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. I think the ego spirit integration is happening. Um, certainly life I, work. The, the, the ego spirit integration, I love that. It, when you said that, I immediately thought of energy management. Mm-hmm. Because that's how we, that's part of what we're managing, right? Yeah. We're managing the ego, which often manifests in a monkey mind and starts to control through fear and apprehension and not good enough and less thans, you know, that, that totally runs interference. So, well, it's survival. The ego's about exactly. survival. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it does, and the ego disdains change. Yes. It does not like change. So you saying that ego spirit integration is perfection because that's going to be one of the first things that's going to kick up dust, isn't it? Is oh, the yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. yeah. Yeah. You pay yeah. attention to it. Yeah. Wow. Great point. Yeah. Interesting. The other uh, integration that's, uh, that's occurring right now, and again, the pandemic put it into motion was to have many of us question our life work balance before it was work life balance how do i balance life into my work <laughs> you know what i mean because uh it, it work was the absolute priority well now life and work have been thrown together i mean you've just been thrown into it you know for many of us many people with you know children especially but have to work at home and uh and so you have that experience now of balancing uh your home life and your work life and that's the other integration because many people will be going back to work and now how do you integrate what you really benefited from being at home what are those benefits that you're going to integrate into your work life and what boundaries you know will you set around your work life so that it can integrate into your life life work <laughs> anyway yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but it's it is i think now more than ever work uh is is becoming secondary for the first time in a very long time in our society yeah it's interesting that you talk about that because when you mentioned work, it made me think about systems. And that's one of the things that's changing are our systems. And our systems are changing in ways that we don't even realize yet. So I was thinking about people that used to go to work and now they work from home. Eventually they'll go back to work and the thing is, is that I've been saying for months, we are in an altered state of reality and we don't even know it. Because I've been in an altered state reality many times, you know, um, going on pilgrimages or be, being on special trips or being in ceremony. Oh my or gosh, the 10, 10, 10 retreat that we went on. Yes. Um, with himself. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. 
talk about an altered state of reality. <laughs> that was intense. It's true. And the thing is about an altered state of reality is that usually when you're in it, it feels normal. Yeah. It feels like it's just, another, you're just doing what you're doing and it's just another thing. But for me, and I don't know if it works this way for everybody, but for me, I usually don't realize that I was in an altered state of reality until I return home back to my routine. Mm. And when I look back on it, it takes a completely different quality than anything else that happens. So like if I just go on a regular vacation, I go vacation and come home. Oh, that was fun. I look back and I've got all those memories. An altered state of reality doesn't work the same for me. You know, I'll go on a pilgrimage or go do ceremony or something like that. And like I said, while I was there, it felt somewhat normal. I'm just having the experience. But when I get home and I look back on it, it takes on a, I guess the best way that I could describe it is kind of a dreamlike quality. And, yeah. and so we're in an altered state of reality because everything shifted, nothing, there's no normal that's settled. And so when I think about systems and I think about people returning to work, there's so many of us that don't realize that even it, when we quote unquote, go back to work and we return to those buildings and that sort of thing, that's also going to be altered because this has changed everything. People have been working, you know, from home. Now they've got to get used to working back at work. I've wondered for myself, you know, because I've got much less um, social interaction, especially physically than I used to. And I wonder, and you've mentioned before, I think you mentioned in boundaries, in our video boundaries, you mentioned the fact that um, you feel like you've lost a bit of brain function. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking as clearly, you're foggy, you're foggy headed, that sort of thing. And so it makes me wonder the same about social interaction. Might we be a little bit strange or awkward? in our social interactions when people are crammed back into cubicles working with everybody and and then you've got variations of everybody's been living differently right you can still even live in the same geographical location but living differently depending on you know how big your family was how much you did how much you chose to do you know during this whole thing i mean there's so many things that ended up shifting and so getting back in interaction and, and not even talking about, are they mask wearing? Are we still social distancing? Are we, you know, still disinfecting and the changes that that could bring in, in, a, in a workplace that aren't even just about returning to work. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden we're kind of different as we head back into the same environment. And so even once the mask wearing and just everything goes back to not wear, not any pandemic concern anymore. I think we're going to look back at this time and realize, in fact, we have been in an altered state of reality. I think 2020, it's so it's it's been kind of a bit of a, a co cosmic humor to me as we have a tendency to say hindsight's 2020. <laughs> I know. How about that? <laughs> yeah. And, and this, I think this year is going to kind of bring that in spades. And I think there's going to be a looking back to and a feeling who we are now compared to who we are in the future that I think is going to feel a bit different. And so how do we integrate those experiences? Because so many of us are waiting to return to normal. Okay, well, here's how. Well, I say here's how, but <clears throat> I love this. I love what you said. It's so true because you're thinking about things that are potentially uh, very possible and uh, very realistic. Mm -hmm. And so when we are where we are now, and we'll use going back to work as an example. So when I go back into the workplace, it's going to be just like it was, you know, Joan's going to be in that cube and so-and-so is going to have that office and it's just going to be 
work as usual or what whatever you have a you have a different expectation of what it will be but that's that's the memory you have of work yeah. okay well the memory of life is <laughs> is now history <laughs> so uh you're creating a new one it's like it's like planning a vacation and you anticipate the vacation and you're excited about it and you're like oh and i'm gonna lay on the beach and it's gonna be great i'm gonna have my fruity cocktail and be so relaxed and you know just think about how great the vacation's gonna be and then the vacation comes and it's rushing to the airport standing in line in security checking the bags the plane is delayed you're sitting next to somebody who's you know snoring or whatever i mean it was it, it and then you get there and your luggage is lost or delay or something happens and then you go to the hotel and you got to go through the check-in process and it, it's like there are more hassles <laughs> it seems like and then if you're traveling with children <laughs> changes the vision a little bit um <laughs> right yeah. and it's, then it's warms. It rains every day while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even be on the beach. But even if you could be on the beach, yeah. you finally get to the beach and you're like, ah, oh, I'm on vacation. Isn't this wonderful? Oh, well, we better get ready for dinner. And then it's getting ready for dinner. And then it's, but you're never truly enjoying the moment of the vacation as much as the anticipation was, yeah. you know, exciting. It, it was more exciting than anticipation than the actual event itself. And so when you prepare for change, what I love about what you said is just highlighting all the potential outcomes and then saying, wow, well, what if it isn't going to be the same? What would be different? And how am I bringing myself into that new environment? Yes. You get to plan ahead. And this is called anticipating change and adapting to change and also being part of the co-creation process of change. Yes. And now, now you get to create what that outcome is going to be. Yes. So you, we could create the line and security being part of vacation and you'll never know who you meet talking to the person next to you, learning about their culture, their background. I mean, all kinds of cool people you can meet in an airport, but that's part of the vacation. It's part of the journey. This is part of the journey. Anyway, ooh, I think I trailed off a little bit, but <laughs> did I, I, did I make the point? Did I, tie it back. <laughs> I'm not sure if I tied the point back or not. Uh, <laughs> but the, the whole idea is being prepared for change in the yeah. integration, integrating, integrating. Yeah. So you running through that scenario made me understand something else about change because Sometimes it might not even be change at all. Sometimes it's just different than another E, our expectation. Oh, yes. Of what it's going to be. Yes. Okay. That's change in its own right, right? Because if we have a preconditioned idea or a notion of what it's going to be, and then we have an expectation. Mm -hmm. And then when we get there, when it doesn't meet the expectation, that's change, right? All of a sudden we got to switch tracks. That's disappointment. <laughs> yes. Well, when you have expectation, the majority of time you can, you can expect disappointment because you've set yourself on, this is what the path is going to be. And then often haven't built in any flexibility to be able to respond when you get there and find out, that wasn't what it was at all. Yeah, it's like having a baby. You can't wait to have a little baby and you oh, you can have a little baby and I get to dress him up and hold him and take care of him. But what you don't really envision <laughs> is the, the sleepless nights, the spit up, the, you know. <laughs> um, 
and, and those things. And yeah. uh, so having some realistic expectations is absolutely key. That's such a great point. Yeah. Well, and really trying your best not to have expectations. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Releasing, not being attached to the outcome. Yes. I totally agree. That's, a, that's the best way to go. Yeah. And it's hard. It's, it's hard to do. I mean, so many things. It's one of the things that I've learned you know, over time is there's a lot of things that I talk about. And um, they're so easy to say, but putting them in practice is more difficult. And so, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, yeah, that, you know, but that's so hard. Yeah, I get that it can be hard, but is it not worthwhile? And is it, is it where you want to go? And how do you want to get there? You know, so yeah, a lot of things that we talk about take, you know, consciousness, awareness, um, self-discipline, accountability, courage, just the courage to make the choices to change, to change our expectation or our mind about what we thought it would be. And to see how quickly we can bring ourselves into, into line to say, oh, well, that's not what it was, but I'll just go with this because this is the reality of the circumstance. Yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. And, mm -hmm. so, and so when we were discussing the whole work situation and we were discussing systems, you know, it's one of the things I've seen a little bit with... Um, school teachers i know a few school teachers that are in the, readapting to you know what's required of them under these circumstances and so we've got teachers that some that are going to school and having to teach physically in person but then there's some children that their their families have chosen online they don't want to send their children to school for a variety of different reasons and so some of these teachers i'm finding not only have the stress of having to go to school and deal with everything that they have to deal under this in this new environment with all of you know the the safety precautions and everything else but once they get home their online students have been mailing them they don't know they don't understand this lesson blah 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 so i'm seeing where some some teachers are being kept on the hook virtually 24 hours a day because they don't want to let their online students down they want to be there for them but at the same time, they've got to do their regular gig. And so I'm seeing where some of these old structures, what's happened is they've, they've changed some things, but they're trying to squeeze new elements into old structures. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. We need, the structures need to adapt, not just make some changes, but make logical changes, it, make changes that serve individuals in their life work balance instead of their work life balance because that's part of what's happening with a lot of these systems that have, that have sprung up you know a job or a career is supposed to be hopefully it's something that you get some satisfaction out of but at the same time the main reason most people do it is because they need money to be able to live and so but unfortunately these systems have grown up and up and up and up and the, the top has gotten more and more disconnected from the people that are, you know, at the bottom. And these top people are making the decisions that are affecting these bottom people, not even understanding what the bottom is going through. And so that's happened underneath us. So part of this is wanting to encourage people that as these employees are trying to adapt to the, the, the new way of being and the, and the new normal, is trying to bring the voice to the table to say, you're trying to superimpose this old structure on new circumstances and it's not working. Mm -hmm. And having the courage to come forward and say, this is not working for us, we need to do this differently. And trying, and it's hard to do because you need your job, right? You need the money, but they know that. And so that's one of the things that causes us to swallow our voices and causes us to kind of end up having our lives ran by our work instead of that just being something to supplement our lives so that we can live our life and our relationships with our family and find some joy and some purpose in life. Wow. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. The, the systems are 
going through an integration process. Yes. And who runs the systems, but humans. So humans get to have a say in co-creating the outcome of that as well. It's so true. And then, you know, while you were talking, I was thinking about another integration is it's not so much about going to work anymore. It, 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 if it doesn't, if it doesn't have that sense of fulfillment, it's going to be hard to harder to do now. So it's integrating a little bit of your uh, passions, uh, your life purpose, or a little bit of your uh, passion zone into your work. Yeah, and integrating the two of those. It's like soul work and your um, life work, you know, that you have to do. You have to integrate both of those uh, because we all, I believe, come here with some soul purpose, some reason for being here. And whether we remember or not, you know, we have these little turning points of change and these events and encounters and all these things that, that occur in our life that help shake us up and wake us up and say, you remember now? <laughs> Uh, and some of us go, oh yeah, I remember now. Thank you. You know, sometimes, you know, it's a feather tapping you on the shoulder. Other times it's a brick hitting you up upside the head, but <laughs> the change is going to occur until you get it <laughs> and it wakes you up. And so, uh, it, it is remembering, uh, why you're here, what, what you, what brings you joy and doing that, integrating that into into your work as you go back into the those routines, integrating that into the routines. Yeah. Hoo-wee. It's a big topic. It's so broad and deep. I feel like we've just scratched the surface, but it's always in conversation with us, right? So we know that this is one of those golden strands that's gonna weave its way through all of our videos, because it's about change and that's what we're navigating and shift is, the shift is change. Change and transformation, yeah. being rearranged, finding course, making course corrections. Yeah. You know, to, to, uh, to, to, to navigate through the, through the changes that come our way, um, to try to manage our lives and manage our personal energy and how we're choosing to view all the things that come our way, the positive changes, the things that feel positive, the things that are a little bit heavier of heart, unexpected, blind sides, the ones that leave us reeling and, and, and a little bit stunned and confused for a little while because we're not sure we can't get our footing, you know, all of those things. Yeah all the personalities and all the faces of change. Yeah. Yeah. But if we talk about it like we're doing, mm -hmm. it just makes it easier to navigate. And, and I'm just always comforted in the fact that I know I'm not alone. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're, we're not alone. And uh, that's what these conversations have, have done for me, uh, you know, also adding some laughter into life and, yeah. Absolutely. joy and just uh yeah a joy a joy in the midst of this crazy place you know it's 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 we're it's like we're helping each other rise to our highest self when the world is at its lowest oh that is so beautifully yeah. stupid oh my gosh it's so true and this right here this is a good practice yeah well and for me and I know for you this right here was a course correction mm, it this was right here was a course correction I felt when everything shifted I felt a shift in my heart and this is a passion project I had mm. to do this Mm -hmm. I had to do, I was compelled, didn't like the thought of being on camera. I've always froze in front of the camera. That's hard to believe <laughs> that, that that's even you. <laughs> that, that, You're so that, comfortable. Yeah. But yeah. that was yeah. part of it too, is the fact that it's so funny because I look back where I was 
And when I thought about it, it loomed so high like a three-story high brick wall of thinking about getting in front of a camera and blah, 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 blah. And it's so interesting because once I took the steps and I stepped in, there was so much grace and there was so much ease and it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. And now I look back at that wall and it was like, it's like this high on the ground. It's like, uh, why did that loom so high? You could have just stepped over it, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. It's been absolutely fascinating. And so for me, this course correction and this passion project has totally shifted the energies that I feel around me, how I view moving forward in the future, how I view my place in the world, and especially my purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are the paddle up Shifts Creek. <laughs> <laughs> you are the paddle the help that helps everybody else get up Shifts Creek. The paddle. <laughs> You're the battle, Alicia. You're crazy. I think you the battle. <laughs> You'd probably like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't make me do it. <laughs> Don't act coy. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. Beautifully stated. Yes. Beautifully stated. Yeah. Wow. Whew. These conversations, I'm telling you, they are uh, intense. Uh, I feel this intense energy running through me constantly while we're talking. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, really an incredible experience. Yeah. So, well... We, uh, we hope you've enjoyed the experience as well. Yeah. It's been a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to hear what all of you think, uh, what thoughts or aha moments maybe you got out of this, and share them below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel because we typically put our videos out a little bit earlier than we post them on social media. And uh, hit the bell, hit the like button. Let us know if you like what you see. We love to hear your comments um, because that, they help us better understand where you are and what you're enjoying and what your, um, what your triumphs and your trials are. That makes a big difference to us. And when you do things like like and subscribe, it helps other people. Uh, it helps us get to other people so that they can get our our message and our videos too. So we really appreciate you being the, the wind beneath our wings. Yes, well said. Until next time, just be your best self. And remember, head up, eyes forward, don't look back. We've got this. We've totally got this. <laughs> This, this conversation is for all of us because the more we talk about it, the more it reinforces. <laughs> this is not our intro. <laughs> keep going, baby. Keep going. Come on. Keep it short. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. I got something to say. You need to pee. What's going on? No. Remind me. Okay. I'm just going to say, just sit there and sit back and let me say. Okay. And for those that love dessert, I highly encourage you to hang out to the end for the bloopers and outtakes.
You'll totally love them. <laughs> Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Chicks Talking Shift. I'm Angel. And I'm Alicia. We are so happy you're here. We are so happy. I, that's exactly what I said the last time. God. Thank you. <laughs> I keep saying the same thing too, Angel. <laughs> I see my videos. I'm like, that's what you say all the time. <laughs> and then I think maybe somebody gets comfort out of the routine. They always know what to expect. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if we should second guess it or not. <laughs> right. Okay, here we go. in my eye. Hold on. Okay. Did you get some in your eye too? Yeah, I decided to rub them just in case. Because <laughs> I didn't want to have to do mine after you had already done yours. It's like, okay, if you're going to go to the bathroom, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> that was silly. That's almost like being a parrot. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, All right. Here we go. Hi, we're Chuck. We're Chuck. <laughs> we're Chuck. Um, we're ch we're Chuck's talking shift. <laughs> We've been talking about teachers. <laughs> now we're Chuck on the chalkboard. <laughs> what? Chunks talking shift. <laughs> We're chunks. <laughs> We're chunks. <laughs> oh, we went from monks to chunks real quick. <laughs> now we just got to get to hunks. <laughs> make our, let's make a beeline for the hunks, girlfriend. Uh, no, of course. Can we get a little drunk? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just a little, kidding. little bit. Yeah, no, no drinks. All right, yes. here we go. Let's yes. take a ride. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.